Good morning. My name is Anu Mitra, and I'm a docent in the Cincinnati Art Museum. And this is another edition of CAM Look, which happens at 10 o'clock every morning, so check in every day. Commenting on her work in a PBS documentary entitled, What Does Resistance Look Like? The American contemporary artist, Kara Walker, noted, I am not making work about reality. I'm making work about images. I'm making work about fictions that have been handed down to me. And I'm interested in those fictions because I'm an artist. And any sort of attempt at getting at the truth of a thing, you have to wade through these levels of fictions." End of quote. Kara Walker works very much in the practice of wading through history to arrive at her own conclusions. As a history painter, she bears witness to the occurrences of history and the various lenses through which it becomes fictionalized. As a portraitist, printmaker, installation artist, filmmaker, and professor who explores race, gender, sexuality, violence, and identity in her work, she tells stories based in history that reflect her own point of view. Walker's story has a dark underbelly and is meant to make us think both intellectually and reflectively in what it means to be American, to be African-American, how black women experience their identity in how their bodies are represented, and how our contemporary culture has created a great divide between and among peoples. As she weaves her story, Walker's images provoke reflection on race, gender, and violence through the stereotypes that she presents, often implying that history has not been a good teacher. Walker's art reinforces a particular point of view as much as it provides resistance to its representation and interpretation. Kara Walker was born in Stockton, California on November 26, 1969. Her father was a painter, and by age three, Walker had decided to become an artist herself. She graduated from the Atlanta College of Art and received her MFA from the Rhode Island School of Design. In 1997, Walker became one of the youngest people to receive the MacArthur Genius Fellowship. In 2007, she was listed among Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World. In 2012, she was elected to the American Academy of Arts and Letters, and in 2018, to the American Philosophical Society. The artist, Barbara Kruger, commenting on her work in the Time Magazine list, wrote, quote, Walker's installations create a profusion of backstories and revisions that slash and burn. She raucously engages both the broad sweep of the big picture and the eloquence of the telling detail. She plays with stereotypes, turning them upside down, spread eagle and inside out. Her silhouettes throw themselves against the wall and don't blink." End of quote. To understand Kara Walker, one has to examine how she references the grand historical narratives of European history painters. She uses the official record to remind us how the evils of slavery were left out from these documents. As a reviser of these fictions, she fills in the gap with traumatic images of brutality and violence that existed then and still exists today. For the Cincinnati Art Museum prints that you see before you, Walker leaned on Alfred H. Gonsi and Henry M. Alden's lavishly illustrated Harper's Pictorial History of the Great Rebellion, published in 1866. Using this source text, Walker makes photo offset lithographic enlargements of wood engravings from the two volume original. Then she overlays blow ups with solid black screen printed silhouette figures. Walker's silhouettes interrupt the official record as if to emphasize that in this tale of brutality and violence, all sides lose. Walker's form, the silhouette, is essential to the meaning of her work. It is a stand-in for the stereotype, which, as she puts it, also says a lot with very little information. 
The silhouette also allows Walker to play tricks with the eye. There is often not enough information to determine what limbs belong to which figures, ambiguities that force us to question what we know and see. With the cut out, Walker presents a vast array of horrors so that it is impossible to tell which horrors were invented and which were not. From the mere outline of forms, one detects the racial identity of the person. The hair, the body type, the facial composition are telltale signs. History as viewed from the eyes of the oppressor and the oppressed are vastly different, and this juxtaposition forces the spectator to consider both viewpoints simultaneously. More like riddles than one-liners, these are complex, multi-layered works that reveal their meaning over time. In Alabama Loyalist Greeting the Federal Gunboats of 2005, you see the push and pull dynamic of differing histories. The crowd run, runs to herald the federal troops, while the young, shapely African-American woman runs to avoid the violation that awaits her. In Signal Station, Summit of Maryland Heights, 2005, the dominating beacon on the hilltop stands juxtaposed with the decimation of the pregnant body fleeing the scene. An Army Train, 2005, shows the progressive march of colonial power in stark contrast to the hopelessness of the African-American bodies in the foreground. Walker elaborates on her art by noting, quote, the silhouette says a lot with very little information, but that's also what the stereotype does. So I saw the silhouette and stereotype as linked. Of course, while the stereotype can communicate with a lot of people and a lot of people can understand it, the other side is that it also reduces differences, reduces diversity to that stereotype, end of quote. Thank you for visiting Kara Walker with me. As we end this morning's session, I wanted to leave you with a couple of questions that you can ponder. What is a stereotype that you live with? And how does it make you feel when someone assigns you a stereotype? In return, what are some of the stereotypes that you put on others when you don't seem to know them as well as you could? Keep on thinking and tune in for another edition of Cam Look at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Thank you.